So, as mentioned in the previous video, once we have our keyword list generated, we want to start getting some USP and kind of like marketing point ideas. This is going to be the easiest way to actually generate any sales because, again, I'm going to keep talking about this because it's so important. If you target generic keywords and you're launching a new product, you're going to fail. If you already have 500 reviews, then sure, run keyword focus sales. You know, come to the site, we'll talk about that. Or if you're just optimizing a listing to re-optimize, that's actually a really nice idea to use that keyword research doc and just literally check if you have specific keywords that you know if you ranked for, you would generate real organic sales for within your listing. So obviously this is a pretty you know generic point, but if you don't have this keyword in the exact form on the listing, so you can see, or you can't see it's above the fold, but searching the exact match keyword is not finding anything here, okay? So if we go back, we try this one, search on this listing. You can see again, they don't have it. Now they do have like versions of this. So if we just typed in, um, you know, moss balls, for example, that's going to come up multiple times in two variations, which is what you like to see. And then if we just typed in specific Monsera, that's going to be in there as well. You know, 55 times on this page, that's good. Um, but when we're competing against these sort of things, we want to have like multiple options. So even this person doesn't have cheese plant, which is basically another way of calling a Monsera. Is it Monsera? <laughs> I should have chosen a different example for this. It's gonna sound like an idiot, but this this is like a kind of a, a good example of like use variations of the same keyword in your title because the title, which we'll get onto in the the whole video on title optimization is the single biggest ranking factor, or I should say optimization factor on Amazon. Okay. If you don't have it in your title, especially for anything new, or if you don't have marketing budget behind it, it's going to be really, really difficult to rank. Okay. So if we say this um, cheese plant example, and we go back to here, you can see they only rank eighth for this. Now that's basically because they don't have it in their title. This is probably the best listing for that result, but 20th and 40th for two cheese plant related keywords. That's why, right? Whereas a lot of Monsera, Monsetia keywords are gonna be really, really high. You can see there's a hundred variations they rank for here. So a lot of them are first as well. And then you can see like all of these small tail keywords or long tail keywords that they rank first for are gonna add up so quickly, all these variations. They rank first for keywords that generate 5.5 thousand searches a month and all of them, apart from probably this top one, which I could say is like a little bit more generic primary keyword, are long tail keywords. So that's the power of adding up these small keywords and just multiplying that. So we can actually add like a formula here. I'm not gonna do it in this video just because I don't think it's worthwhile but you can basically estimate how many sales a month you think each keyword is worth, okay? So I'm gonna show you, I don't really wanna reveal the exact formula we use in this video, because it's a little bit proprietary, but if you imagine, if somebody is ranking first organically, they would be generating a, a specific like volume of sales through a specific keyword. Now we could say search volume times by, we can say 10%, click on the first organic ranking, right? Now you might argue that it's 15%, 13%, whatever it is, let's just say 12% for now. So 32 visitors to this listing. Now, obviously this is a hyper targeted keyword and it's Amazon, which gets crazy conversions, but the conversions are not hundred percent. So then we would maybe say, okay, let's think about a keyword where you might get mm -hmm, probably maybe 30% 30, 30 conversions for something like this. So this keyword generates around 10 sales or 9.6 sales per month for this particular example. If we take all the ones they rank first for, you can see that by ranking first, they generate 361 sales a month for these keywords. So if we ranked first and had the same listing, same price, obviously that's not really realistic, but same price, same reviews, etc., we would expect to generate 361 sales a month from ranking first, just for these keywords. You multiply this out by all these, and then you get somewhere. If you imagine you took the second ranking one, 
this monster keyword here and you said okay I think the second ranking position gets probably pretty high as well let's say 10 then you can see that this is a monster keyword and is it worth ranking for maybe conversions are a little bit less for this one this generates 984 sales a month for this brand can you see how that pales in comparison oh sorry can you see how that would be so much more difficult to do than ranking for all these super long tail variations maybe with the exception of this and adding those together so targeting one by one i know this seems like a bit of a monster undertaking but this is such an easier way of doing things than trying to rank for this where you'd need to generate you know 100 sales a day artificially to even get close or maybe a little bit less actually maybe 30 40 sales a day for a 50k keyword versus these you'd need like three or four for a few days and you would rank first that's basically what we're going after with this whole competition analysis approach so from here what i kind of want you to do is if you have helium 10 so i'm going to assume you've used cerebro you've got the free trial with the link in the first video you're using this i think there's multiple dozen like urls you can use or asins you can use for cerebro even if you just need to pay for it once that's fine or you can use the Claude example that we had before. So then we can say, based on these keywords, and we're gonna attach them again. Again, you can use ChatGPT, it doesn't really matter which way. Based on these keywords, let's just delete this. You can ask it to come up with a specific USP um, that basically angles you away from this top ranking competitor. Now you have to create the prompt in the right way to do this, and sometimes it can be a little bit fiddly, but it'll be something like this. I'll just pause the video and write something out. Okay, so this is the prompt we've gone with. We might need to fiddle with it again, but essentially what we're telling it is we're a new listing. So if you are anywhere under 500 reviews, I would go with this for ideas. So you'd need to focus on longer tail, less competitive keywords while still optimizing for the larger ones in the future. So we don't wanna not put in like moss pole and plant climber and all these variations just because we don't wanna actually rank for them straight away. We still wanna rank for them in the future. We just know that we can't spend a thousand pounds a day or a thousand dollars a day on marketing to get there. So instead we wanna spend 10, $15 a day, rank for these and then reinvest the profits into these medium and high competition keywords. So the focus should be on creating concepts that other listings may have missed and implementing these into the USPs um, in the future. I'm just gonna say USPs. So I've got the same prompt on ChatGPT as well, because it's kind of like a nice test to see if one's better than the other. So once these run through, we'll see what we're gonna generate. So they've gone with eco-friendly and bendable and system-based keywords. Okay, sure. Obviously, like in this example, the first is not really relevant, but they've gone eco-friendly, adjustable, um, oops, bendable, indoor. Yeah, these are not too bad. Multifunctional propagation station. That's quite a nice idea. Quite like that. So now you would just take the one or two you like and you would ask it to fully flesh out the um, the one you like. This one seems pretty cool because it's not one we've seen mentioned a lot yet. So if we take this keyword, I'm sure that this is not really gonna have any search volume, no. But propagation itself might do. So we'll have a look at this. Six in here, 193, 300, 350. This is actually pretty good. Obviously Valve's keyword's not really related. Um, but I quite like that idea. So let's have a look at the next one self-watering i mean if that's a product you have but not really rent like this is this is a good idea for like product research but if we already have our product and it's a little bit more generic than this then obviously we can't really implement that um modular vertical again could integrate vertical type keywords aesthetic integrated grow lights again you could merge two products together really good idea for actual um like bundles and things like that but this is more product research as well so let's say could you merge and build out the idea further for um option two including some concepts from part five and idea or let's say idea one and five so we'll see what that comes back with in a sec. 
this one space saving modern home this is quite a nice idea as well actually reusable weather resistant design indoor outdoor use sure it's a bit generic mm, no they've got the eco-friendly moisture retention that's not quite a good keyword USB customizable modular plant system interesting how they both started with the system one um, I quite like this number five one reusable yeah USB indoor don't like that one don't like that one apart from that one so let's say four and five for this one so all we're gonna do is have the same prompt could you merge and IBF option five, including concepts from option four integrated. Um, so this should give us like a really nice kind of almost USP to go off that we can just take over and use in the future. And the reason why we're building out all this at one go, I'll explain in a second, but it's because we can basically re-optimize an entire listing in one go. So your ultimate, yeah, sounds a bit AI that one, but might convert, okay. Ecolux propagate. <laughs> Okay, sure. Modular eco-friendly propagation station, sure. We don't have that, let's say. Humidity, aesthetic design elements. This is quite good. Just copy-wise. Space saving vertical design. And then target keywords here. These aren't obviously the keywords that you would utilize in Amazon yet, but some ideas are pretty good. I don't think this would be a um, keyword in and of itself multifunctional but we'll have a quick look yeah not really neither example so let's have a look at ChatGPT's version small space yeah customizable yeah dual purpose sure full marketing message that you even have here it's kind of cool easy integration and maintenance custom height and configuration eco-friendly yeah durable yeah space saving sleek sure so this is maybe a little bit generic, this one, um, but it's gonna be, it's gonna be good enough for now. So if we take this, and we're gonna say, okay, this is our like core idea. The, the one thing I would say, if you're starting up is the one thing I keep preaching, is you need to have one or two concepts that you actually go after that you can hit. And the reason for this is that's how you get from zero to 20 sales a day is because going after like this is not going to be it. But from a keyword research and competition analysis support point of view, let me just massively hit this. We can throw this in here um, and leave this here for now. Okay, so then we can come back in and basically copy this in the future to utilize for our um, optimization for the listing itself. Okay, we can basically paste this back in in the future. I wanted to do one more example um, of how to actually find like these hidden keywords that we had before. If you have, let's do it without Helium 10. So let's say we have our keyword list here and we just copy in this one keyword list in. And we're gonna say, um, based on this keyword list attached only, because we don't want it to use the data from the previous one that had all the Helium 10 data in. Um, create a unique uh, USP for the product. Give us 10 examples. So all we're gonna do here is basically come up with some target keywords and verify them manually. Now, I'm not gonna verify them manually just because you know I'm way too lazy for that, but all you would have to do to verify manually is see if they pop up here. So let's say whatever first example they give us. Um, sure, let's say adjustable balcony, versatile, leverage keywords, adjustable, versatile. So I don't really like this first example. So let's take this one. This is a really nice keyword. But what we'd want to do is type in decorative and then make sure that this renders. So I'm just gonna do this in a um, incog so we don't get the helium 10. So you can see decorative plant climber. So here's all of our examples that we've got for free. We haven't used helium 10 for this one. And we've just got the idea of we're going after the decorative type USP. Because that's not gonna be enough in my opinion, let's say um, this one. 
we're still going to have competing against some big companies. But again, run this verification. So run the, I'm going to copy the keyword and then I'm going to search to see if it is in the exact point. The screen's cut off for this one, but you can't see that there's no um, exact keyword for this in, the, in each listing. So if this is our target product, we're not going to be having anyone that has that exact listing here. Okay. Which is a really nice point. But we know that all of these have decent search volume or at least decent search intent. A little bit different to search volume because you can see here, search volume itself. Let's have a quick look. Obviously you wouldn't have this data, but let's go back to our Helium 10 example, put in decorative, and even this person doesn't rank, which is kind of interesting. But we can go across here and say, um, see if he ranks anywhere for this. So within this tool, you can also include. So this is exclude. Including is, where is our include? Okay, phrase containing, that's why. So we'll put this in here. See if anything around this comes up, zero. So we know we're not competing against this person for this keyword, which is actually probably a good thing. Okay, so we can just reapply that. Come back across here and we can see some other examples. Space saving. Urban jungle isn't really a keyword I love. Um, balconies though, where you can go, you can run through the um, like product ideation ideas. So like where, when, things like that. So when would this product be used? Where, what type, um, who? Although that's a little bit less example. But variations of plants is gonna be a good one for this. Variations of climates, variation of location of this is also gonna be good. So like hanging would be a good example. Uh, beginner friendly, easy to install. DIY guide is probably a good one as well. Heavy duty. So if you're angling for more like massive plants, you would have a really higher price point, but you would just be like making your product a lot more robust. Vertical herb gardens. So herb examples is probably not a bad idea. Um, flexible is a good one. Knotted, sure. Minimalist. You know, if you just create a different color for the product, because even just searching these, right? If we just go for the um, plant climber again, I'll just zoom out on the listing. You can see that like, let's just get a few more. You can see all of these are pretty much the same. Like they're either wire or, you know, this like moss pole example. So wire, moss pole, wire. This one's kind of funky, but that's a sponsored ad. Um, moss poles, wires. Like you can see, there's just nothing different. So even if you just made like a bright pink one, like obviously people probably want these to blend into plants, but bright green, bright red maybe, so it blends into flowers. You have angle on like tomato, red blaze plants. Um, that would be a pretty good idea. So it's just about niching down a bit better and using that to then have the applications and optimization in the future. So. Again, these tools are really, really good for that. And they just make life a lot easier as well. You can do all this manually, but when Claude and ChatGPT have free plans and even Helium 10 has free plans, like why would you make life difficult for yourself? It's just not worth it. Okay, so hopefully this makes sense. Any questions on competition analysis, let me know. Just in general, just as a TLDR, think about it in terms of how difficult it would be to outrank a listing based on the current search volume. So for example, if the search volume is 100 and the people who rank have a thousand reviews each, ignore that keyword completely, it's just not worth it. The search volume is 100, but everybody that ranks has three reviews, suddenly like we can outrank them in a day and we're probably gonna get a couple of sales a day just from that keyword. But don't stop there. Reverse engineer your listing back to that keyword example. So if that keyword was plant climber for tomatoes, have tomatoes in the image, right? And then build your featured image around that location or that keyword, sorry, and then that imagery and things like that. And then we can go in and change things in the future if we need to, once we're already ranking for that. Because if people start uploading reviews with tomato based keywords this is a little bit of an advanced point so if you're a beginner ignore this next two minutes but you can actually optimize yourself from reviews based on your listing now don't want to get into this too deep but 
This is how you can basically rebroaden yourself once you're generating 10, 20, 30 sales a day is let's uh, let's take the plant climber with tomato's example. People will be posting images and hopefully saying tomato based plant climber keywords in the review because they are using it for that. Those are the only customers you've had so far, the one, two, three a day that came through. So once that starts happening, you should rank better for these keywords. So then if you need to add more keywords and let's say dilute that targeting, that USP in your copy, in your title, specifically in your featured image probably, that's not gonna kill your rankings and kill your conversions for that person or for that term. You'll still rank for that, but we just add on more competitive things as we go along. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, not sure if I explained that well, kind of bouncing around ideas there. But yeah, competition analysis, the short version, take your primary ranking competitors, the more niche, the better. Put them into any large language model AI tool that you want. Integrate the prompts that we've talked about here. Take them into Cerebro within Helium 10. Put them in, see what they rank for, see where keyword opportunities are from there, and then utilize those in your future optimization, which we'll get to in a second. Hopefully that makes sense. Any questions, just drop me a message.